Welcome to this week's Simon. I'm Swati. And I'm Jacques of the Scientific Affairs team here at Illumina. Jacques, do you work out? Would pushing the mouse count? <laughs> I don't think so. But, um, you know, there's a recent study that takes studying exercise to a whole new level. Are you talking about the Lindholm et al. paper where they study epigenetics and gene expression before and after exercise? That's right. You know, they performed a three-month supervised one-leg exercise training study on 23 young volunteers. An interesting approach was that only one leg was exercised and the other wasn't. So that served as a control within the individual. I wonder if they started walking around in circles with one strong leg. I hope not, but I'm sure they did after a while. <laughs> but seriously, it is important to have a really good control. You know, it's good that they accounted for intra-individual controls because the epigenome changes are caused by external factors such as diet, stress, and other environmental factors. Uh, that can cause these changes in the epigenome. Exactly. So, so they collected skeletal muscle biopsies before and after exercise from the exercised and the control legs. They then analyzed DNA methylation on the human methylation 450K array and RNA sequencing on the Illumina HiSeq platform. Usually, DNA methylation is observed at CPG sites, means at C cytosines that are next to G, guanosines. Interestingly, they observed that areas outside of CPG islands, shores, and shelves were differentially methylated. Now, there was significant enrichment of these differentially methylated regions in enhancers. Although the overall methylation did not change, there were an equal number of sites that increased and sites that decreased in methylation. That's right, and genes that were upregulated after training were involved in morphological changes, including cell adhesion, blood vessel development, and extracellular matrix organization. Now, these genes were associated with a decrease in DNA methylation. The data shows that DNA methylation was not random, but a controlled process in response to the exercise. You know, it's truly fascinating how our epigenome can not just quickly detect changes, but also react to it with a controlled and prepared plan of action. That's right, and every cell type responds slightly differently to the exercise. And the environment, of course, right? Uh, but you know, that makes it quite, uh, the, the, that makes the use of biopsies quite challenging because they can differ in cell population. Nonetheless, they show that DNA methylation changes are associated with gene expression changes in roughly 20% of unique genes that are significantly changed with training. Training-induced methylation changes primarily occur in enhancer regions that are enriched with transcription factor binding motifs. Technology has given us the first epigenomic peaks into how our cells react to exercise. You know, as our cells receive an exercise signal, a cascade of events occur to respond to this external stimulus. Our epigenome immediately works to selectively turn on and turn off specific genes. That's all we have time for today. Please feel free to reach out to us with questions, thoughts, suggestions, concerns, or any other feedback. We always love hearing from you. See you next time. Bye. Bye.